All right, so by far one of the best Christmas gifts that I got this year was this, the Gamex S70 Blade one terabyte SSD for my PlayStation 5. And that is because the PlayStation 5 only has, I believe about 840 gigabytes free out of the box. And given how large games get nowadays, it is nice to have a little bit of extra internal storage without having to swap things around through, you know, like an external passport or something like that. So today what I wanted to do is just kind of go through the install process and kind of highlight what it's like to actually install the SSD in the PlayStation 5. So let's just go ahead and jump right in and I'm gonna switch over to a voiceover so I can show you all the steps that I took to get this thing installed. Now, obviously, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have a hard drive that's compatible with the PlayStation 5. I chose the Gamex S70 Blade because it was affordable and it didn't require an additional heatsink since it comes with a thermal pad, but we'll get to that in a little bit. There's an affiliate link in the description where you can buy this if this is the one you decide on. Also, if you have your PlayStation 5 positioned vertically, you'll want to remove the stand first. Sadly, I forgot to include footage of me removing the stand on mine, so you'll have to use your imagination or just watch when I put it back on in reverse, I guess. You'll want to lay your system down flat with the PlayStation logo facing down, and then it's time to go ahead and pop off that top cover. Now with the system facing you, you have to apply a little bit of upward force on that back left corner. This is probably the most stressful part of the process, applying force to the plastic here, but it will give way and then you can slide the panel to the right and lift it off. With the inside of the console exposed, now we want to remove the shield here, which is held in place by a Phillips head screw. With the shield now removed, you can go ahead and set that aside, and let's go ahead and get the drive ready for installation. On the bottom is the drive itself, and above that we've got the thermal pad that we're going to stick to it. Start by removing the strip covering the adhesive, and then carefully line it up with the notch at the end of the drive and make sure that it's pressed down tightly. The connector should be to the right of the XPG logo, and the notch should be at the bottom. Now you can go ahead and insert it into the drive bay with the thermal pad facing up. Also, the connector is keyed, so you shouldn't be able to push it in incorrectly. Using a smaller Phillips head screwdriver, you'll want to go ahead and remove this screw here and grab the spacer as well, because we'll use this to secure the drive. Once it's securely connected, you should be able to go ahead and push the drive down and take the smaller Phillips head screw and spacer and position it under the notch to make sure that the drive stays in place securely. With the drive secure, now it's safe to go ahead and restore the shield that we removed earlier to access the drive bay. And now with the shield back in place, it's safe to go ahead and slide the panel back onto the console. Thankfully, sliding it back on is way less daunting than taking it off, and you'll know that it's been reseated securely once you hear the click. And then finally, using a flathead screwdriver instead of a Phillips head, restore the base of your console. At this point, you can go ahead and fire up your PlayStation 5. It'll take a moment for it to initialize the drive, but after that process is done, it should show up like this. And now you should be free to start filling up that drive with all sorts of games, media, and applications. All right, so that's it. That is the process for installing the Gamex S70 Blade SSD into your PlayStation 5. Again, kind of straightforward. The steps can be a little bit intimidating, but honestly, it's not that bad as long as you have a couple of screwdrivers and you don't mind the a little bit terrifying process of kind of popping off that cover of your PlayStation 5. Now, if you have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, I would say for the most part, it's a pretty straightforward process. I was a little concerned that it just had a thermal pad instead of doing a full-blown heat sink, which is usually recommended for these types of drives, but I've been using it for about a you know a few weeks now and I've not had any issues yet and I've been playing the PlayStation 5 a lot. So again, if you have any comments or questions about the process below, just let me know down there. I'll do my best to get back to you. Uh, as always, thanks for taking the time to watch. Have an amazing day. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.